Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm looking at part 2A of A Bit of Orange's series about Berkeley's Evolution 101 website. As this is a series, I would recommend watching part 1 first, but it's not completely necessary. This one looks to be a bit shorter, as they basically just spend the whole time complaining that we're related to other organisms, as if not liking that fact will change anything. So let's go! Just remember, the stuff presented by this creepy bear is from the Evolution 101 website, written by the Understanding Evolution Team. Commentary by Rentafriend2000. That's me! The explanation. Biological evolution is not simply a matter of change over time. Lots of things change over time. Trees lose their leaves, mountain ranges rise and erode, but they aren't examples of biological evolution because they don't involve descent through genetic inheritance. What's funny about this is, I have a middle school science textbook called Evolution Change Over Time. It's good to see the team at Berkeley are doing a little better than the 8th grade public school kids. Well, bear with me here. I think that this is a bit of a radical idea, but perhaps they go into a bit more detail as to what biological evolution is if you actually, you know, open the book? You do realize there's more to a textbook than the title, right? I mean, I think you do, since you already have a generic comment response video that deals with that very matter. Thank you for your unsubstantiated blanket assertion. We always enjoy the unsupported statements of people who either watch our videos with a critical eye, or who sometimes merely read the title, and decide it provides enough information to warrant a response. If you wish to make an argument against anything which has been said in our videos, don't forget to provide some evidence or arguments for your assertions. Otherwise your comment will only serve to make you appear like an ignorant troll regurgitating a bumper sticker's worth of information they stumbled upon in a Twitter post or cat-oriented meme. Or textbook title. So are you telling me that the textbook considers the erosion of a mountain to be biological evolution? Or are you being slightly dishonest for the sake of a little jab at the public school system? I had a blogger criticize me, saying I was demanding expert-level specifics and their definition for the word evolution. But as I demonstrated in the previous post, it is possible to define evolution so the word actually means something. And as I explained in the previous video, the definition given on the Evolution 101 website does that. Just because it's a broad definition doesn't mean that it doesn't mean anything. It just means that it's defining a broad topic. Go back there and check that action out. I'm like Webster's Captain of Awesome over here. Yeah, these guys are all, evolution is when stuff happens, but not when things happen. Yeah, it's like when one kind of animal gives rise to another kind. Now, what does kind mean, you ask? Well, it's whatever's convenient at the time. You can't nail it down too well, because if you do, then no matter where you nail it, you will then be able to see macroevolution in action. And then, when I point out that this isn't good enough for a definition written by three teams of PhDs, I get criticized. Yes, because you insist that the definition doesn't fit your warped view of what evolution is. So you change the definition in order to fit your opinion of evolution. Meanwhile, science rolls on, continuing to rely on the fact of evolution for things like vaccines, while creation scientists make no progress and continue regurgitating the same old debunked arguments. Go fig. The central idea of biological evolution is that all life on Earth shares a common ancestor. Just as you and your cousins share a common grandmother. Yeah, only our grandmother is a rock. Citation needed. No really, Grandma Rock gave rise to Grandma Soup and somehow all life came from that. I can see you're really enjoying battling that straw man. I have yet to see any actual scientists suggest that we evolved from rocks. And of course, showing a can of soup to represent the primordial soup is a nice way of dismissing it offhand, but it is quite likely that a concentrated group of organic molecules in at least a semi-aqueous solution would have been able to produce the reactions necessary to kickstart life. But that's all beside the point, as the Berkeley website is about evolution, not abiogenesis. I know creationists have a hard time keeping those two topics separated, but they are separate topics. Evolution can't happen until after self-replicating life has begun, and because of the nature of the problem, we will probably always know a great deal more about evolution than we ever will about abiogenesis. Can you picture her in her rocking chair, huh? Huh? Get it? These are the jokes, kids. You get what you pay for. Yeah, fair point. Through the process of descent with modification, the common ancestor of life on Earth gave rise to the fantastic diversity that we see documented in the fossil record and around us today. Okay, I see we'll be skipping the identity of Grandma for now. Yes, 
because we're not talking about abiogenesis. We are talking about evolution. How life started is irrelevant when discussing just evolution. You can even say that God did it if you like, but even if God did get things started, evolution still happened. Also, rather brazen to say documented in the fossil record. Even these guys will later admit that the fossils present more of a jigsaw puzzle with pieces missing than a documented record. Yeah, you know what? There are a lot of pieces missing from the puzzle that is the fossil record. But we have enough pieces to know what the overall picture would look like if all the pieces were present and accounted for. You do not need to have every single piece of a puzzle before you can see what it's supposed to be. When you study this stuff longer, you'll come to find that the evolutionary biologists know the evidence for evolution is in the fossil record, while the evolutionary geologists know it's in the biology department. Interesting. I've only ever seen geologists talk about geology and biologists talk about biology, with some slight overlap. I've never seen a geologist say that the only evidence for evolution is in biology, nor have I seen a biologist claim that it's in geology. I have seen biologists point out biological evidence for evolution, for instance genome sequencing, mitochondrial DNA analysis, observed speciation events, and the like. As far as geologists go, saying that the evidence for evolution is in biology, uh, here's a quote from an article published in 1922 by Professor Edward Berry of John Hopkins University, titled The Geologic Evidence of Evolution. In approaching the geological record of evolution, I will state only facts and leave fundamental causes severely alone. Seems like even back in the 20s, scientists were sick of creationists conflating the origin of life with evolution. Well, continuing on, the mechanism of evolution we leave to experimental biology, and I do not advocate any theories of explanation. So it looks like we're leaving the biological aspects of evolution to biology, and the geological aspects of evolution to geology. Seems about right to me. And as a side note, in the introductory segment of the article, Professor Barry essentially hits on some of the most important points we still need to repeat to religious people today. Evolution is not some big scheme to take down religion. Evolution as a theory does not seek to explain the origin of life, and evolution as a record is distinct from theories about evolution the mechanism, such as Darwinian or Lamarckian evolution. I haven't read through the whole article yet, but I plan to in the near future. It is a really neat little glimpse into the past of the creation versus evolution debate. And yeah, that, if nothing else, should speak volumes. What speaks volumes is the fact that you blatantly misrepresent their positions and claim to have made some good point by doing so. Hey, but don't take my word for it. Let them speak for themselves. Oh, goody! It's quote mine time! Paleoanthropologist has seemed to make up for a lack of fossils with an excess of fury, and this must now be the only science in which it is still possible to become famous just by having an opinion. As one cynic says, in human paleontology the study of fossils the consensus depends on who shouts loudest. Okay, aside from the fact that that particular quote is mined so often as to have its own page in the Talk Origins archive, Remember, the point you were trying to make was that biologists say that geology has the evidence for evolution, while geologists say that biology has the evidence. That quote is a geneticist, which definitely falls within the biology category, saying that a geological field has become a mess of opinion without evidence. Now, that's not quite what he said if you read it in context. It seems that it was more of a point against science journalists who make their points based on a scientist's personality and charisma rather than on the actual science. But even if that were what he was saying, that doesn't support your point. In fact, it does rather the opposite, having a biologist who doesn't seem to have much respect for that particular field of geology. Genetics has no proofs for evolution. It has trouble explaining it. The closer one looks at the evidence for evolution, the less one finds of substance. In fact, the theory keeps on postulating evidence, and failing to find it, moves on to other postulates. Fossil missing links, natural selection of improved forms, positive mutations, molecular phylogenetic sequences, etc. This is not science. So in the opinion of this particular geneticist, who also happens to be a creationist by the way, something I noticed that you left out, there is no evidence in genetics for evolution. And I also noticed that he's also not stating that the evidence is in geology, like you said he should be. Uh, he's stating that there just flat out is no evidence. And as there is a plethora of evidence, his opinion is, frankly, wrong. So again, that doesn't support your claim that biologists are looking for evidence in geology. <laughs> Two quotes? That's all you had? Two quotes? One of which was from someone who is on your side in the matter? To demonstrate that all biologists and all geologists insist that the evidence for evolution is in the other's field? 
neither of which actually said anything even remotely close to your claim. Nice. Evolution means that we're all distant cousins, humans and oak trees, hummingbirds and whales. Oh, great. As if I didn't have enough Christmas cards to send out this year. Do people still do that? I mean, I get one Christmas card a year, and that's from my mother. On the other hand, in a roundabout way, I'm sure they don't realize. They've just justified eating your family and friends. You didn't think we had no justification for baby eating, did you? Or have they just given me the ammunition to attack people who've chosen to live an alternate lifestyle? Hmm. And what is that even supposed to mean? We're distantly related to trees, therefore you can attack the gays? I'm not following your logic, and I think I'm glad I can't on this point. Or when you say alternative lifestyle, do you mean something more like vegans or vegetarians? You didn't specify, so I'd like to give you the benefit of the doubt, but really, using our relation to the rest of the animal kingdom as an excuse to attack anybody, regardless of lifestyle, is abhorrent. Listen up, vegetarians! That carrot is my cousin, and so is that tofu! Although the family doesn't like to talk about him. Phew, <sighs> I was really nervous that you were going to start gay bashing there. Perhaps you're a slightly better quality creationist than what I'm used to. Slightly. But still, if you're using that logic, then we just can't eat because we're related to everything. So stop eating and see how well that works for you. I fully support you in that decision, by the way. So anyways, basically, other organisms must die for a human to live, whether it be other plants or animals, and since we're distantly related to all other organisms, you are suggesting that it is now immoral to eat any other organism. So our choice is to live, immorally consuming other organisms in doing so, or to morally starve to death. Is this the sin we're all supposedly born into? You know, things have to die for us to live, therefore we're all murderers in need of a savior? I mean, I suppose that makes a bit more sense than us being punished for our ancestor having eaten a magic fruit. I mean, remember ladies, the reason giving birth hurts is because your ancestor wanted to increase her knowledge, and so ate a magic fruit that would do that. But God prefers ignorance, so he punished everybody who ever lived after that because of it. When you sink your hard pointy teeth into my cousins, I hope you can hear my heart break over the crunch of their dying veggie flesh. Ask yourself this. Do you use the salad dressing to hide the flavor, or to cover your murderous guilt? Well, I hate to break it to you, but salad dressing is made out of items that were once living organisms too, so the dressing won't hide anything. It'd be more along the lines of pouring the liquefied remains of your other cousin's decomposed corpse onto the first cousin's corpse for flavoring. Well, that got morbid in a hurry, didn't it? Just keep that mental image next time you enjoy a nice Caesar salad. Now on that lovely note, I shall end my video. They didn't really cover much in this one, did they? Part 2B will be coming up next week. Remember to follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon. See you next time!